Big news today from Google, Instagram, Hulu, and more. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 365 for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2015. This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships tasty and guilt-free snacks right to your door. With over 100 flavors to choose from, like mini Belgian waffles, you'll never get bored of snacking again. Try NatureBox at naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Welcome to the show. Megan Maroney is off today. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right into the news. Apple Music launches in a week. And in anticipation of that event, Google today rolled out a free ad-supported tier of Google Play Music for users in the U.S. The free service is actually a series of human-curated playlists from Songza, which Google acquired last year. Joining us to talk about this and a couple of other stories is Mashable reporter Carissa Bell. Hey, Carissa, how you doing? Hey, Mike. Doing well. Now... Apple just got pwned by Taylor Swift for giving away free music without paying artists. How is Google planning to escape the wrath of Taylor Swift? <laughs> well, I guess you never can tell um, who's going to get Taylor's wrath. Um, but, you know, they do. One of the things about Google's new service is that it's ad supported. And so that's one of the things that Google has brought up is that they say because it's ad supported, that, op that opens up an opportunity for artists to get more revenue from the service. And I also understand that it's kind of like because they are essentially giving you canned playlists, you can't you can't say I want this Taylor Swift song or that uh, song from this other band. You basically can just pick these prepackaged, curated playlists, which makes it kind of sort of like radio, doesn't it? Unlike say when you have on-demand music, which is more like downloads. And so I think that they may also be trying to present it more like a radio station, in which case they don't really have to pay artists. Uh, anything or as much is that is that how you read this as well or is there something else that they're doing here that uh, uh, to get around the Taylor Swift phenomenon no you're absolutely right it's a lot it's much closer to the Pandora model than you know sort of Spotify and RDO and these other um, sort of more on-demand services and that users can't actually you can't actually control what songs you're playing other than you know what the actual theme of the station is um, so in that sense, you know, users have a lot less control, but it is free. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so what do potential users of Google's free streaming service need to know about us? For example, how are all these canned playlists categorized and can we skip songs like we can on Pandora? How does all this work exactly? So the stations are very similar to, you know, what you would get from Pandora or even, you know, RDO's curated stations in that, you know, you have some of them are genre based, some of them are based off of um, sort of moods or activities, like you might have some for exercise and running, or you might have some for, uh, you know, for partying and stuff like that. Um, and so they're all, and there's thousands of these, and they're all curated, as you said, by the, um, in large part by the song of the team who joined, as you said, joined Google last year. Um, as far as skips, you do get skips. Um, it is limited. Again, it's a lot like Pandora in that you get, um, I think, it, I don't have an exact number, but you get a handful of skips every hour. So, you are able to skip, but you should probably use it judiciously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I hate getting to the point where you have a really bad song that you hate and you're out of skips. Yeah. You have to listen to it. I hate that. Well, uh, when will this service be available and where exactly? So it's available in the U.S. now um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the web version and on the Android app. Um, the iOS app, is they say it's going to be updated sometime this week. So it'll also be available there. Outside the U.S., they haven't given a timeline. Okay. All right. Well, the other big news you covered today is that Instagram unveiled a new feature that transforms the picture sharing site into a new kind of service, really. I mean, can you talk about Instagram's new Explore feature? Yeah. So this was a pretty huge update. I mean, previously they redid the Explore section last year and that it sort of was more personalized suggestions based on people you follow. Um, now that's been completely redone. So you can actually discover events and news and um, trends as they're happening in real time. So it's a lot more like Twitter. Um, so in, in that sense, you can, you know, find, you know, the app will highlight places that are trending, for example, um, you know, like the situation in, in Charleston right now. So if there's a lot of um, protests going on or events happening there, it might say, you might see that that, uh, that area is trending. And you can also, um, it'll also like identify 
you know, sort of other sort of niche Instagram communities that you might not see in your normal feed. So it might highlight extreme athletes or architecture or, you know, certain vacation destinations, you know, to sort of try and really get a lot of the great content that's on Instagram, but you don't see if you don't follow. It also uh, cranks up the envy factor. For example, I checked it out before the show today and looking at trending places, there are a whole lot of beaches, people having fun in the sun while I'm slaving away. Uh, this is really great because it's great not only for the people who are posting pictures, but the people who want to see pictures. Because in the past, you'd kind of say, well, I want to go to Instagram because I want to see some pretty pictures or see what my friends are up to. Now there's some news event or some, you know, the Oscars are happening, a Super Bowl or whatever. And these are going to be trending places or some event that you care about. It's more like you, it's more like Twitter, like you said, and you can go and just basically get your finger on the pulse of what's happening out there in the world, which is really cool. Now, they also upgraded Instagram's search feature. What can you search for now that you couldn't search for in the past? So now you, um, it is also very um, heavy on location. So you can search for specific locations. Like, you know, for example, in, you know, in newsrooms, we often know that something is going to be trending before it actually hits that trending list. So you can look for, you know, um, you can look for posts that are coming out of specific locations. Um, you can look for, you know, um, you know, tags that are trending too. So you can actually, it makes it, do you have much more granular controls over, you know, the actual search rather than just searching for, you know, people or the top places. This is, uh, of course, Instagram is owned by Facebook. And this search, I think, is clearly better than Facebook's search. I've been waiting for a good search on Facebook for a long, long time. Hopefully that is forthcoming sometime soon. Now, this uh, new uh, feature set is for the U.S. only for now, isn't it? Do we know when this is going to roll out in the rest of the world? Yes. Yeah, so the, actually, the upgraded search is available outside of the U.S. right now also. Um, as far as the new Explore section, they have not given a timeline, but they, they did say that they will. Um, it's going to take them a little longer to fine-tune um, the Explore section for other countries because, as you can imagine, you know, depending on the market, like people might have different interests. So they say that as sort of people in the U.S. start using it, then they'll begin rolling it out um, to more places, but no firm timeline. All right. Well, you wrote recently about an app called Binder that's pretty much the opposite of Tinder. <laughs> Tinder, of course, is a dating app where you can swipe to express interest in somebody in the hopes of starting a new relationship. So what is Binder? Yeah, so um, Binder is an app that, like you said, it's, it's sort of loosely based on Tinder, but it's for dumping people. So oh, man. whereas... You know, with Tinder, you know, you have the whole swipe right. If you like someone, this is if you want to break up with someone, then you can enter their contact information. It generates a little contact card. You give it a swipe to the right. Um, add in a, you know, pretty hilariously brutal reason as to why you're dumping them. And that person will get a phone call and a text message um, from the app, letting them know that they're being dumped. I love the, uh, the excuse that uh, is canned that goes out and says, some people say love is the solution to everything. Those people are wrong. I'm dumping you. What a wonderful app. What a world. Carissa Bell is at Mashable.com, and you can follow her on Twitter at Carissa B.E. Thank you so much for joining us today, Carissa. Thank you. All right. Well, coming up, the Confederate flag just got banned just about everywhere online, and Google's got a brand new wearable. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now in NatureBox, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks and pay just $2 for shipping. You know you're going to snack, and when you do, you want it to be worth it. Something tasty and satisfying, but also something that doesn't make you feel guilty. What you need are snacks from NatureBox. Choose from over 100 healthy and crave-worthy options to be delivered right to your door. All their snacks are made with zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero trans fats, and no high-fructose corn syrup. And best of all, they taste amazing. So good and so much better for you than the other snack options out there. So next time you're hungry, grab strawberry lemonade, fruit stars, or sweet and salty nut medley and get smart about snacking. Right now, if you go to naturebox.com slash twit, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks delivered right to your door. What are you waiting for? Go to naturebox.com slash twit to start your free trial today. We thank Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Well, here's what else is going on today. Major electronics retailers are banning the sale of Confederate flags and flag-related merchandise. eBay, Amazon.com, and others say the flags represent racism. Google also announced today that it would remove all content containing Confederate flags from Google Ads and Google Shopping. 
The bans were triggered, of course, by the killing of nine black members of a Charleston, South Carolina church last week by 21-year-old white supremacist Dylan Roof. Walmart, Sears, and other stores also announced bans in both retail and online stores. The mass murder triggered a heated conversation over the use of flags on both government buildings and by individuals. Fearing the bans, the online stores were hammered by a rush of buyers. The flags are seen by some as a symbol of Southern culture and states' rights, and by others as a symbol of racism and slavery. Well, Google unveiled today a new wristband that provides constant health information for people who are participating in medical studies and clinical field trials. It was developed by the company's Google X Labs, you know, the same group that developed Google's driverless cars, Google Glass, and Project Loon. The wristband can monitor pulse, heart rhythm, skin temperature, light exposure, and even noise levels and other data. While some Android Wear watches can perform some quantified self-tricks, this new Google wristband is more scientifically accurate. Google plans to start testing the bands this summer, and the company will try to get regulatory approval for its use in a wide range of scientific, medical, and pharmaceutical applications. Hulu plans to offer Showtime's internet streaming service to subscribers starting early next month. Showtime content will be available across multiple devices. The price will be $8.99 per month, which will be added on to the $7.99 per month that a regular Hulu subscription costs. Showtime is the first premium network service offered by Hulu, and the subscription will give Hulu subscribers unlimited on-demand access to all Showtime original series, as well as movies, documentaries, and sports across all Apple and Android devices, Microsoft, Xbox One, and many other gadgets. CBS owns Showtime, and Hulu has nearly 9 million U.S. subscribers. Well, some guy with a lot of time on his hands, whose name is Nick Lee, got macOS 7.5.5 running on his Apple Watch. He did it by porting an old Macintosh emulator called Mini VMac to the Apple Watch. Let's take a look at this most unnatural act. And there it is. Yeah, this is, uh, takes a while. <laughs> this video is actually pretty long because it takes, uh, it takes like 10 minutes to boot or something like that. But there it is. Icons and windows so small you couldn't possibly see it. Amazing. Man. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. You can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Mike Elgin. Thanks for tuning in. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.